Hi, my name is Isaac and in this video we're going to be going over everything that you need to know about deep mob learning. And for the completionists, we'll be going over how to complete all the quests too. I've done my best to make this video easy to follow. I've left timestamps in the description should you need something specific. Also, if you feel I've missed anything or have a suggestion for another mod you want me to cover, feel free to leave that in the comments, it really helps. Finally, there's links to the playlists in the description of any mod help videos I've made, along with my series on the mod pack. Let's begin. First off, this is a list of all the materials you'll need. The item list is also in the description should you need it. If you wish to complete all of the quests in the book, your material list will look something more like this. Once you've got all of your materials, we're going to go ahead and place the coal block on the floor and we're going to left click the redstone onto the coal block 15 times to create soot covered redstone. We are now going to add this soot covered redstone to our obsidian to make soot plates. Once we have the soot plates, we're going to be making four soot machine casings. Next, we're going to make the deep learner. Now we're going to make two trial keys. We're going to go ahead and use one of those trial keys to make the trial keystone. We're going to make the simulation chamber, 16 polymer clay, and a blank data model. We're then going to take our data model and make the overworld data model. Go away. Once we've done that, you can pop most of the stuff back in the chest, as we're not going to need a lot of it at the moment. We are now going to right click our deep mob learner and add in our data model. So this is the overworld model, so that means we get a variety of different mobs that we are going to be able to kill to level this thing up. Should you choose some of the other ones like zombie or skeleton, you will just be killing zombie variants or skeleton variants or so on and so forth. So I chose this one because it's the easiest to level up. It doesn't matter what mobs you use. You don't really need a mob farm to level this one up. Although I do recommend a mob farm if you're able to build one. So now in order to level up our model, we're gonna need to get we're gonna need to get kills. So with that one kill, we now have data one out of eight and tier 40. So if we get eight kills, it will upgrade to basic. So now after eight kills, you can see that it's upgraded to basic. The next tier is 16 kills and that will be advanced. We need to get it to advanced at least as that is when you start getting the physically condensed matrix fragment. Obviously the higher you upgrade it, the more you get, but it also becomes increasingly more difficult to combat the enemies. If you're just starting out and have low armor, I recommend going for the advanced trial key. If you're seriously buffed up, I recommend trying your hand at self-aware. If you lose, these keys are consumed. If you win, you do get the keys back. So I now have this leveled up to advanced, and that means that we are ready to start crafting the trial keys. I'm only doing advanced as I only have Neverite armor, and I don't really know what to expect. I've only tried self-aware. So here we're gonna make the advanced overworld mobs trial key. So here we've crafted the key, and as you can see, there are some negative effects, such as mob speed and thunderstorm. So with that information, you can see that with the thunderstorm, there's probably going to be fire on the ground so you're going to need to take yourself a bucket of water or perhaps some fire resistance now i have a key it's time to prep the area for the trial keystone so i've gone around the radius of the trial stone to figure out exactly where the border is now it's important to build yourself a wall around the trial stone as you can quite easily be knocked out of bounds and fail the trial. Now a few things to keep in mind before we start this trial. You're going to want to try and get hold of a bunch of mini hearts or healing potions. The mini hearts work really well and they're very very cheap. You get a lot of them from a mob farm so if you make an automated mob farm you'll be golden. If you're not quite sure how to do that a link to my survival series where I made my own mob farm will be in the description if you're interested. So the next thing to think about is you want to make sure that you set your spawn close by so you've not got too far of a distance to run back if you die. You want to make sure that you have plenty of health on your armor because the person that we're about to fight really does hit hard. Now when you come to start the trial and you see the terrain is not proper to start the trial, that genuinely means that somewhere in this radius you have something like a block standing out or a hole in the ground. This can be grass, this can be a block that's been placed not by you, anything that gets in the way of this. The trial's not affected if blocks are placed during the trial. I've had Enderman drop blocks while I've been in the trial and it's not affected things, so don't have to worry too much about that, but it won't let you start the trial if there's something blocking it. But you'll be able to know if it's the wrong one because it'll be lit up with fire. So now we're ready to start the trial. Once you put in the key, it's gonna count down and then the guy will spawn in. So we're gonna put the key in and we're gonna wait. And as soon as he spawns in, we're gonna try and deal some immediate damage to this guy. He's very, very quick. And the quicker we take him out, the better. 
Once I get to half health, I'm going to he heal myself because he does do a lot of damage very quickly. We're going to keep focusing on this guy because he is the... Once he's dead, the trial's finished and you've won. <laughs> As you can see, he's extremely hard to hit. There we go, he's finished. And we want to make sure you do is don't go straight towards the center. You want to make sure you get rid of any creepers. I have had it before where my rewards have been blown up by creepers. Well, that was unfortunate. So there we go. A very good demonstration of why you should build your wall out of blast resistant material. So from doing one advanced trial, we've received the key back because we won the trial. We've got one physically condensed matrix fragment, and we've got four pristine matter. Now, depending on your trial level, obviously depends on your rewards. So you may need to do a couple of trials to get the materials that we need for the next crafting recipes. You're gonna need to keep doing the trials until you get at least two physically condensed matrix fragments and four pristine matter. It doesn't matter which kind of matter, <laughs> funny. We're then gonna put them in the crafting bench and make the loot fabricator. We're also gonna go ahead and make the matter condenser. So one of the new machines that we've just made will require power and that is the simulation chamber. The best and fastest generator that I've managed to find that doesn't consume a ridiculous amount of resources is the demise generator. It takes rotten flesh. So as you can see on the side it's now charging and it caps at 2 million. Here we need to add in our polymer clay and if you wish to use this you will need an additional data model. So once we've thrown that in it's going to start the trial and here we can see that this time we only got the overworld matter. It has a 42% chance of getting pristine matter and different tiers can affect the pristine chance. So self-aware is significantly higher. We're now gonna take a look at the loot fabricator. So with the loot fabricator, you throw in a pristine matter and it will start to process it. And once it's complete, it'll throw out a significant amount of resources. These resources are relative to the matter that you use. And finally, the third machine we have is the matter condenser. Now we're not currently able to utilize this fully. So I will just show you what to do so far and tell you the rest when we get there. You put you in your pristine matter like that. You can just put them all in a stack like that, but it helps if you spread them. It just speeds things up a little bit. So once you're at this point, you're now going to need to start plowing away at these trials. And you're going to need to keep going until you get 32 physically condensed matrix fragments. Once we have the fragments, we're going to take them and put them like that. And then we're going to put the netherite ingot in the middle. This makes the glitched ingots. We're now going to go over to the smithing table and put in an item of netherite armor along with the glitched ingot to make the glitched armor. Once you've done that to all four, you can see that it is now at data zero out of 32 and the tier level is faulty. Now this is where the matter condenser comes into play. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your armor pieces and put it into the matter condenser. It will now start slowly adding these pristine matters onto your armor. And as you can see, once it's reached 32, it goes up to basic. And when you get to 96, it goes up to advanced. After advanced, you need to get to 192. Once you get to 192, you get to the superior tier. And finally, you need 384 to get to the self-aware tier. Now, as these armor pieces increase in tiers, the armor rating and toughness and knockback resistance also increase. So now we're going to take a look into the upgrade paths of the armor and see what you can add to it at what tiers. So at the faulty tier, you can add a ghost module and you will get soul vision. All the other models will have different buffs. If we get this to basic, you can see that it's now added night vision. Getting it to advanced adds no additional thing, but it could add further benefits to some of the other ones that you are add. Once you get to self-aware, you now have the ability to fly. And if you look on the armor, it now gives you the buffs plus one fly. So once you have this at the self-aware tier, you need to get your data model to at least basic before you can use the flight ability double tapping space you can now see that I can fly and above my hunger there's a little bar appeared and that is the duration of the flight time. The more armor pieces I have with flight on it it will increase it by a factor of one each time so you can have it times four. Once it runs out 
I'll fall to the ground and take damage. As well as our flight being relatively short, it also consumes some of the data. So for the longest flight duration possible, you need to make sure that all of your armor pieces are upgraded to self-aware and equipped with the Ghost module. You can also get this to self-aware to ensure that you're not really gonna run out. Although to make it fair, it still does drop down as you fly around, but it's extremely slow. As you can see, it's just dropped one and the second one's just dropped. And there you go. As long as we drop to the floor before it's gone, we don't take any damage. And if you spend a few seconds on the floor running around, once you go back in the air, it's pretty much put itself back to normal again. And just like that, we've now been over everything you need to know about deep mob learning. Now, if you're a completionist and you wish to get all of the extra bits, you're going to need to make all of these data models. You're going to need to run all of the models in the simulation chamber to get with the remaining matters. Once all that's done, you receive a few rewards and that's deep mob learning complete. And just like that, you now know everything I know about deep mob learning, which quite frankly was not a lot until I started making this video. You know, I can tell you that for sure. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed and goodbye. Yes. Yes.